Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we are going to do some heat of reaction calculations, and we're going to be using formation equations and Hess's law of summation. So remember, when you use Hess's law of summation, you can use the equation where you take the sum of the delta H's of formation of the products minus the sum of the delta H of formation of the reactions. You can also recall that the overall enthalpy change in a reaction is equal to the sum of all of the enthalpy changes in the individual steps in the process. And remember, there's often more than one step in order to get to the so-called activated complex. So we can use individual formation equations for each of the substances in the overall reaction sequence to calculate the delta H's for the reaction. And we do that by adding the individual formation reaction equations. And in order for a reaction to occur, remember that all of the reactants must have their bonds broken and all of the products have to have new bonds formed. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the delta H of reaction using the formation reactions. And we're going to do that uh, we're going to calculate the heat of reaction for the reaction of lead 2 chloride with chlorine to form lead 4 chloride according to this overall equation. So the reaction that we're going to try to calculate for is lead 2 chloride plus chlorine yields lead 4 chloride. And we know, looking it up, that the delta H of formation for this is plus 30.2 kilojoules. So now we're going to see if we can do it uh, using the summation uh, equation and the individual steps. So this is the reaction and then we can look up the formation of lead 2 chloride and again its formation uh, delta H is negative 359.4 and then the formation and this is where we play universe to form lead 2 chloride we would need lead and chlorine. And then the delta H of formation for chlorine is 0 because it's an element, so in its elemental state it would be zero kilojoules per mole, so we don't have to worry about that one. The universe makes that for us. And then for the lead 4 chloride we look it up and it's negative 329.2 kilojoules per mole. And the formation reaction for that would be lead plus two chlorines to get lead uh, 4 chloride. So again that would be its formation equation. So in that reaction the lead 2 chloride has to be broken and we're going to have to reverse it because the lead 2 chloride is a reactant. And the lead 4 chloride has to be made so we would keep it as written. So when you're doing these summations you want to make sure that reactants are on the reactant side and products are on the product side. So again that requires us in the first case to flip the equation. So again this was our equation for the formation of lead 2 chloride we're going to have to flip it and when we flip it the reverse reaction would have a positive value again if it's negative in the forward direction it would be positive in the reverse direction and in the case of the lead 4 chloride that is a product and that's where we want it to be so we can just leave that as is so now we're going to add those two equations together so first what I've done is I've flipped the first equation for the lead 2 chloride so now it's lead 2 chloride yields lead plus chlorine and then my second equation I can write as is and now I'm going to add them up so when I add them all up I have lead 2 chloride plus lead plus chlorine yields my lead and my chlorine and my lead 4 chloride. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to cancel things out that appear the same on both sides. This is kind of like what we did for net ionic equations. So lead goes away and then instead of the two chlorines on this side and one chlorine on this side, this one goes away and there will be one left here. So now we can write the net equation and what's left is lead 2 chloride, one chlorine and lead 4 chloride and if we look up at the top it matches so we did that correctly. Now what we need to do is we need to add up our delta H's. So remember the delta H of formation here when it was flipped became a positive number. 
This one was a negative number. We combine those two and we end up with 30.2 kilojoules, which is what we looked up in a book and found it to be. So now the reactions match. The uh, delta H is the correct number. And because it is positive, this is an endothermic process. So now we're going to do another one of these. So another delta H of reaction using formation reactions. So we're going to calculate the reaction for the decomposition of phosphorus pentachloride according to this equation. So phosphorus pentachloride decomposes to phosphorus trichloride and chlorine. And when you look it up, the delta H for this reaction is a positive 249.7 kilojoules per mole. So there's our overall equation. So we can look up the formation of phosphorus trichloride and the delta H. And then we can look up the formation for phosphorus pentachloride and its delta H. And I've highlighted here the fours, that each of these make four moles. And because of that, in the reaction, since four moles are formed, we're going to divide each of these equations by four. And in the case of the phosphorus pentachloride, since that's written as a product and it's our reactant in our reaction that we're doing, we're going to have to reverse it or flip the equation and divide by four. So here we have the first equation for the formation of the phosphorus trichloride. Here's my phosphorus pentachloride. I'm going to divide the first one by four. So everything, including the delta H, will be divided by four. And then in the case of the second one, since the phosphorus pentachloride is one of our reactants, we have to reverse the reaction. So we'll flip it and divide by four. So now I'm going to do that and uh, add the equations together. So here is my first reaction, and it is divided by 4. So that results in a delta H of negative 609.8. And now it's kilojoules per mole, because I'm making one mole. And then for my second one, I had to reverse or flip the reaction and divide it by 4. So there's only one phosphorus pentachloride. And again, uh, reversing it changes the sign of the delta H. And here it is divided by 4. So now I'm going to add these together. And so when I add this all together, I have 1 quarter of uh, P4 plus 3 halves of chlorine plus phosphorus pentachloride yields the phosphorus trichloride plus a quarter of the phosphorus plus 5 halves of the chlorine. So now we have to cross out to simplify. So the 1 fourth phosphorus on each side cancels out. Notice over here I have 3 halves of a chlorine and I have 5 halves. So to simplify, 5 halves minus 3 halves is 2 halves. So that means that the chlorine goes away and 2 halves is 1. So I'll have 1 chlorine left on this side. So now when I add those together, or rather when I cross out the things to simplify, I'll have phosphorus pentachloride decomposes to yield phosphorus trichloride plus chlorine. My delta H, when I add these two numbers together, is a positive 249.7. That indicates an endothermic process. So the equation matches the original equation for starters. So if you look at the red one here and the one at the top, they match. And then the second point is that since the delta H is positive, this is an endothermic process. So these are not difficult to do. They're a little tedious. You have to be very meticulous about things. But again, you'll see that in the end, they're not too difficult to do. And you can come up with the correct delta H. So this is Ms. Augustine signing off.